Shalom Aleichem, everybody. Hope all is well. We are approaching the holy holiday of Shavuos. Our, our, the day where we celebrate our, our rece- our, the giving of the Torah and our receiving of the Torah from the Creator. Hashem revealed Himself on Mount Sinai and gave us the Torah. We know that this isn't something that just we celebrate as if it happened, but rather we celebrate it because it's happening right now. The Torah is constantly being given, given to us by the Creator. And how much more so is it revealed on the holiday of Shavuos, where it is actually the, the exact date of the year that we received it. There's another interesting uh, aspect to Shavuos that is, that is definitely, um, definitely obliga- it's obligatory to mention, in my opinion, is that it's also the, and, and, and this connects to Shavuos, this connects to the holiday of Shavuos as a whole, and this is the, the fact that today is the yurt site and birthday, the anniversary of the passing and the birthday of David HaMelech, King David. And it is also the passing, the day of the passing, the yurt site, the Hilula of the Baal Shem Tov. So in a Sicha of the Rebbe, and actually my friend told me about this uh, Sicha and explained it to me, and God bless him for that. It's a beautiful idea that needed to be mentioned that there's three, three Jewish figures, Jewish leaders that are very connected to the holiday of Shavuos and it all ties together into, into to what's going on. And this is, there's Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, King David, and the Baal Shem Tov. So we see that these represent three levels in godly revelation and in, in connection to the Torah and Shavuos. Because we know the Torah is one with Hashem. That's the first thing we need. We, we need to appreciate the fact that Torah is one with Hashem. And prerequisite for learning Torah is one has to be in awe of Hashem, has to fear Hashem, has to love Hashem, to recognize that right now they're not just reading words, they're reading the will of Hashem, they're connecting to the Word of God when they're learning Torah. That's a necessary component. So the Torah exists in every heavenly sphere. As you know, there are four main general worlds in, in the levels of reality, and the, within those four worlds are infinite inter. Uh, smaller sub-worlds within those worlds, so to speak, and we can go into all those details. We've gone into those details in other videos, but uh, it's not the, the purpose of this video, but, to, but, the, but one of the purposes of this video is to recognize that the Torah exists in every world. And base, and beca- what's the main difference between all the, the worlds is that the higher you go up, so to speak, in the worlds, the higher, not physically higher, but spiritually higher, the more Hashem is revealed. The more you come down, the more Hashem is enclosed in the world, hidden within the world. But the Torah is completely above any of the worlds. It's one with Hashem. So the Torah, even so, as the Torah is down here in this physical world, it's completely revealing Hashem. It doesn't matter if which world you're in. When you're learning Torah, when you're involved in Torah, you're completely unifying with Hashem. So that means the Torah is so holy that it's not limited to just spirituality. It also comes into physicality. As you know, there are physical things that we are connecting to Hashem with. I'm wearing a kippah, a yarmulke, I'm covering my head, a physical garment. I'm growing a beard, physical hair. That is a way of connecting to the Creator. In Because because that is so, what's so holy about the Torah, is it permeates, it fills the physical. It encloses itself in physicality, that you're able to take physicality and connect to Hashem. And that, was what was, that is what was given at Matan Torah, at the giving of the Torah on Har Sinai, Mount Sinai, on Shavuos, is that before that, people just connected to Hashem through learning about God, learning about the higher levels of reality. But it didn't come into the physical. And Hashem revealed a new dimension to the world when He revealed the Torah. And then all of a sudden now physicality was able to be elevated into the spiritual. As you know, we eat bread on, on the Sabbath, on Shabbos. We eat bread, we drink wine. These are physical things, but we're using them for spirituality, which is the ultimate elevation, which is the ultimate way to connect to Hashem. So back to what we were speaking about, about Shavuos, is that Moshe is this first level. He represents the full godly revelation, the times of full, full, full revelation of God. There was the revelation on Mount Sinai where Hashem revealed Himself, not... not not through any heavenly level. He revealed himself to, to the nation. As you know, in the heavenly spheres, it's the heavenly realms above us. They're unbelievable places. The, the godly revelation there is un, un, unimaginable. But it's still just a ray, so to speak, of Hashem's light. It's just a, ray, a reflection of God's light. But on Mount Sinai, Hashem himself was revealed. And this was such an overwhelming feeling to the people that actually their souls left their body and Hashem had to put their souls back into their body because they were so overwhelmed by the godly revelation. So Moses represents this period where open miracles are happening, where Hashem is completely revealed. Then we have David Amelech, who of course is the first king of Israel, second king of Israel after Shal, but the first established of the King David dynasty. 
the Mashiach dynasty, because Mashiach will come from David, King David. So the David and Melch represents this new level. He is when we already got into the land of Israel, and he represents more of an in-between area of revelation and, and, and hiddenness, because as you know, when we came into the land of Israel, we had to do physical work. The, the man, the food didn't fall from the sky, but we had to actually plant the food. We had to go to war. We had to work the ground. We had to do uh, business. There had to be some physicality involved. But, of course, there was the Holy of Holies present in, in Jerusalem. And we were in the holy city. We had a king. We had King David. So there was, And there were still miracles that did happen, but not as open as in the way of the times of Moses. Of course, there were miracles. David and Melch wrote Tehillim, wrote Psalms. David and Melch fought uh, Goliath, and there was incredible wars, and there was miracles and prophets, of course. There was still prophecy, of course, in the times of King David, many prophets. Shmuel Hanavi was, was the one who, who, who crowned King David. So we obviously do see miracles in the times of King David, but not as openly manifested as in the times of, of Moses. And then we come to the third tzaddik of the list, the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov represents a time where godliness Hashem Tov came into the world in a very dark period of, of time where Hashem was very hidden within the world. Of course, we know that no matter how hidden or revealed Hashem is, He's equally present everywhere. And there's no difference from Hashem's perspective. From Hashem's perspective, it is this, is, everything is, 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 is one before Him. Everything is one with Him. So from Hashem's perspective, there's no hidden or revealed. He sees everything perfectly. But from our perspective... God, God was more hidden. From our, it's just from our limited perspective. And Hashem, is making, Hashem is the one who causes that. Hashem is the one who causes Himself to be hidden from us. But from Hashem's perspective, there's no difference. So the Baal Shem Tov represents a time where, from our perspective, godliness was hidden. And the Baal Shem Tov came in that period and revealed the deepest secrets of Torah into the world, Hasidus. Where, and it was such a great revelation to the world that the Baal Shem Tov before, he was a hidden, at first he was a hidden Sadiq, a hidden righteous person where he, he hid his righteousness. He didn't want people to know the magnitude of how holy he was because he didn't want to cause so much attention to himself. He was saying to himself, learning, involved a little bit, but he tried to hide his holiness a little bit as to give himself more privacy and not to cause so much, uh, you know, get people too uh, interested in him. Then what happened was he met the Mashiach. The Mashiach came to him. And the Baal Shem Tov said to the Mashiach, Master, when are you coming? And what did the Baal Shem Tov, what did the Mashiach reply? He said, when your teachings spread. We have a song for that. It's called, Hey, Masai, Kaosima, Sheheya, Futsu, Menasecha, Chutsa, Matza, 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 Kaosima. I hope you liked uh, that scene. But that's a holy niggin where it says, when is the master coming? Where the Baal Shem Tov says to the, the Mashiach, Master, when are you coming? What does the Mashiach reply? When your wellsprings spread forth. What are the Baal Shem Tov's wellsprings? The secrets of Torah Hasidus. Before the Baal Shem Tov, people, there were the secrets of the Torah. Of course, we had great tzaddikim who taught Kabbalah. There were secrets of the Torah revealed. But the people who were eligible, so to speak, who were able to learn these secrets of the Torah were only the Talmud Chachem, the top students. But the simple Jews were felt a bit left out. They didn't have the ability to learn the secrets of the Torah. The Baal Shem Tov came and said, we are in such a dark place that the only way to counter this spiritual darkness is to reveal a greater light into the world. And what's this greater light? The secrets of Torah. So the Baal Shem Tov took the deepest secrets of Torah, of Kabbalah, and he explained it in a way where everyone can taste from the Torah of Mashiach. Because as you know, Chassidus Kabbalah, it's a taste of the Torah of Mashiach. When Mashiach comes, he's going to reveal an even deeper dimension to, of Torah to the world. And Chassidus is, is a glimpse into that dimension. It is that dimension. It's just there will be more of it revealed in the times of Mashiach. But already we're, we have this in, in our midst. So the Baal Shem Tov represents the, low, the, the, the time frame where there was the most hiddenness of godliness. But then he, to counter that, and to actually not just to counter that, to, 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 to elevate, to, to take things to an even greater level, he revealed the deepest secrets of Torah into the world. So we see that there's like this mirror image, whereas like Moshe is like, he's like the highest level, it represents the time where there was the highest level of godly revelation. In the times of Moses, maybe they didn't need the secrets of the Baal Shem Tov to be revealed. Of course, everyone needs it, but maybe it didn't manifest in that way because they already felt God's presence. They saw the Shekhinah, they saw the, the heavenly fire like surrounding them in the desert. So they felt in awe of Hashem 
all, always. So they didn't. So they 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 really didn't have as many spiritual uh, challenges because there was such an obvious revelation of God. Whereas in the times of King David, there were still prophets and there was the Holy of Holies. There was a there was a time there was a time of miracles to say the least. But there was more still natural way of things. They had to work the ground. They had to go to war. They had to do business. They still had to still be involved in the world much more than in the times of Moses. And then we come to the time of Baal Shem Tov where it's all worldly matters. Everyone was involved in worldly affairs, and the Baal Shem Tov came in and revealed the deepest light of to the world, and of course, he also performed miracles as well. That's uh, as we've heard from many stories of the Baal Shem Tov. So we see that the day, the holiday of Shavuos, is 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 an is an encompassing day. It encompasses all of our all of our stages of, of 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 history as a nation connected to the Creator, and we see that that all of this was given at Mount Sinai. Everything, even the, the Baal Shem Tov, the secrets of the Torah, and now today with with all the the, the disciples of the Baal Shem Tov, you know you have the Chabad Chassidus that's being revealed through the world, breast of Chassidus, and all the other Chassidus in the world. That you see the Baal Shem Tov's teachings are spreading forth, and even other groups of Jewish people are learning Kabbalistic teachings and learning Chassidus. And there's so much secrets of Torah flowing throughout the world, and we can definitely recognize that this is this is attributed to the coming of Mashiach. So recognize that this was all in the times of Shavuos. And in order to, so you see that the people received the Torah from Hashem. It's important that we recognize and we activate within ourselves the ability to receive the Torah. Of course Hashem is giving us the Torah, but we have to make ourselves recipients to receive it. How do we do that? There's, there's, there's many ways to do it, but we can, also, we can start by being joyous, being excited, and recognizing what we are receiving right now from the Creator. Also to be humble, to try to humble ourselves, to be clean, to try to dress appropriately. To try to try to really dress for the occasion, both physically dress and spiritually dress for the occasion. Try to get ourselves involved. Try to. The Rebbe says something very important. Actually, the day leading up to Shavuos, the era of Shavuos, the eve of Shavuos, which is right now, a person has to meditate on the idea Nase Nishma. Why did the Jewish people they merited to receive the Torah? Because they first said Nase and then Nishma. First they said we'll do it and then we'll understand. Hashem said, "Do you want my Torah?" Right away, all the Jews said, "Yes, we'll do it. We'll do it. We don't care even if we don't understand. We'll do it. We'll get." And then they, they, and then they said, and then we'll understand it. Whereas a person might think, oh, I want to understand what the Torah is about, then I'll do it. No, the Jewish people said, we'll do it. Hashem, you're asking of us, we'll do it. We don't care. Our limited understanding is not going to determine our relationship with you. We're, our relationship to you is above understanding. We're connected to you at our, at our essence. So first we'll do it. Nasit, we'll do it. And then Baruch Hashem will get to understand. And this is a lesson for us in life. Our connection with Hashem has to be completely above logic. But when we allow ourselves to be connected to Hashem beyond logic, that even when we don't understand something, we're still committed to Hashem and our relationship is, 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 is established beyond logic, then we can also come to a place where we're humble and we can also reach it in our understanding. So the point is also, the Torah is supposed to also go into our understanding. We're supposed to understand and feel excited and our emotions are supposed to be involved. But that is not the determining factor of our relationship with Hashem. Our relationship with Hashem is beyond understanding, beyond grasp, and even if we don't understand, it has no effect on our established relationship. But when we put ourselves in a humble way where we're connected to Hashem beyond logic, that puts us in a place where it's able to flow down into logic. Because as you know also, the sphere of Keter, which represents will, desire, above logic, is above Chochmah Bin Adas, is above our intellect. So within our conscious faculty, when we connect to Hashem beyond logic, it flows into logic. So may Hashem bless you. May we receive the Torah today. May Hashem reveal the new Torah. A new Torah will come forth from the Sheikh. Which means, of course, everything is, it's the same Torah, everything is included within the Torah, but the Mashiach will reveal so many new secrets to the Torah that have never been revealed before, that people will experience godliness like never before. So may it be today that we receive, that we see this, this, the secrets of Torah that, are, that have been waiting for us all along. May Hashem bless you all. May we celebrate with the coming Mashiach today.